Right, so let's move on to this morning's papers. And joining us uh, this morning is Barrister Ooh. Extraordinaire, Andrew E. Bon, good morning. Good morning, lovely to see you again. Lovely to see you joy. again. We've got to stop meeting like that. We do, <laughs> indeed. And talk about scorching hot. What I love is for the front page of The Times today that the passing out parade, it always compulsory. I've got no idea why they have to wear those sort of bare skins. So this is, this is the rehearsal, isn't it, for no. Two the Colour, which when was that? Yesterday. Yes, they did that yesterday. And the poor guy on the floor there with his... Um, Trombone. Uh, is that the one? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Uh, so, but he passed out, not surprisingly, because well, they always do this, don't they? Well, hot. and it was 27 in London yesterday. Yeah. I mean, it was roastingly hot, and you would have thought... Well, I suppose the military can't say, take off your well, bearskins. Well, 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 you can do. <laughs> and they do in court. So, as a barrister, if it gets too hot, Does it, we don't do have you? to wear our wigs. You know? Is that right? Yeah, I was in court this week with, with Harry and that sort of thing. So, it was good. Yeah. So, um, yes. I don't know what you can tell us about that. Um, what can I tell you? It, it's extraordinary. What I can tell you is that the press and these reenactments that you get are quite extraordinary. Uh, it is the cut and thrust of legal debate in court is very different to what you see on television. Is it? Because it's going on for weeks. So, mm. all you can do is get little sound bites and you can say what's going to happen on that sort of basis. But it is extraordinary, the first royal to be in the witness box for over a hundred years. Um, it was uh, King Edward VII was the last time, Indeed. and he did it in 1891. I can tell you it was a couple of extraordinary things. One was about an illegal gambling card game, um, <laughs> and the other was about an affair um, oh. with uh, Lady Mordaunt. Uh, oh. Maybe a relation, I don't know. A, a penny, um, yes. A penny, absolutely, <laughs> we should ask. Um, but what I loved about that, so he was in the witness box on that sort of card. Obviously, Princess Anne was uh, in court in 2002 um, because her dog um, bit two children. Um, oh, gosh, but, I remember that. Do you remember that? Yeah, and I they do. keep saying, oh, it's 100 years ago. It's not. Princess Anne was in court, but she pleaded guilty in that case. So, so really interesting. And, and just, I mean, what we read in the papers, is, it, is there some veracity in what we read, or is it just a snapshot, as you say? It has to be a snapshot, mm. because you've got to go through the headline. These are weeks and weeks of testimony. It's like, uh, and what I find extraordinary, I met, I met the, the court artists, who are extraordinary people. <laughs> and you go to America, we get wall-to-wall -wall yeah. television. And here we have a, <laughs> and here a we have, And there's somebody <laughs> sort of sketching away. <laughs> it's bizarre, but they're lovely. They're lovely ladies. But um, there again, remember we didn't televise the House of Commons. So, no, you know that's all relative. Well, I think it's quite new, but it's probably not that new. But, and what, what you noticed at the time is, is all the MPs they smartened up, didn't they? Yes. And I think in court, TV or not TV, um, and we talked about that sort of principle. They've started to do the sentencing now. Because right. the idea is that justice should not just be done, but seem to be done. And, and I think that's important. It is important, because people always say, look, why is this person only going to prison for a nanosecond mm. when they've committed these horrendous things? So if that becomes explained, I think then people can dip into it appropriately. But newspapers have to work on the basis of its headlines. Yeah, absolutely. Right, OK, let's let's move then through... I mean, obviously, Boris Johnson wall-to-wall. Wall-to-wall stuff. And what, what I find interesting, apart from all the sort of screaming headlines about general election now, which you sort of covered about summer, very, very predictable, and electoral slaughter in the Sunday Express. Uh, it's war, a uh, duel for the souls of the Tories. What I like, there's a very interesting article, actually, in The Sun, um, which says, bet a fiver on Boris making a comeback. <laughs> before, I bet more than that. I, I think it's interesting. <laughs> Surprise, you, you should, absolutely. Uh, and what they do... Would, hang on, Claire, would you bet on Boris coming back? I, do, I just don't know how to place this. Would you bet your bearskin, though? <laughs> I bet your bearskin. <laughs> I thank you. How did you know I had one? <laughs> hey, hey. Uh, I, I would bet money. I'd bet big money. I think you would. Well, Sir James uh, Dudridge, uh, absolutely, mm. he's suggesting this is what's going to happen. He wants to do this. You'll, get, you'll make millions. He is making millions on the speaking circuit. He but is. he loves to be... And oh. his language, if you listen to his language, the hasta la vista, baby... But also, as stuff. I said, Cincinnatus, yes, who, said, who basically then did go back to the farm, but then he returned. Yeah, he did, and that's what he's going to do. So I'm very <laughs> sad. Uh, I'm leaving uh, Parliament um, at least for now, is what he said. So his words are all in there. And I think the whole idea is to get the political people behind him, get all these resignations, the one person who's going to save us is Boris. And we talked about the politics of personality. I mean, you were mentioning in your glorious, fascinating facts about Maggie Thatcher. Oh, yeah. Uh, and brilliant. I mean, talk about a personality, a very divisive figure. But word on that sort of she got a 376 majority, uh, that's what she did, uh, which is huge in comparison um, even with mm. 365 seats that Boris got mm. last time. But he was the one who united the red corduroys and the red wall, and he did that sort of stuff. Mm. He was the one who, as we said beforehand, he was the highest 
cynical um, politician, Absolutely. but then turned into this Marmite figure. So, without a doubt, it's worth a five. <laughs> it's all a food analogy. It's all a food analogy. On. Other products are available, <laughs> <laughs> other yeast products especially. Um, but it really is that sort of thing. Yeah. He, uh, he loves politics. He hates to be out of that sort of stuff. To have but, the, the reference about MP after your name is important, isn't it? But you see, I think where the press, or certainly where Rishi Sunak hasn't got this right, is he doesn't understand the grassroots. No. Mm. And I do know them because I can see what people are saying. Yeah. And they are clamouring for a change. Whether you vote Conservative, whether you vote Labour, I think people are tired of the two-party <coughs> yeah. system. Yeah. Yeah. And this may well be cataclysmic in mm. many ways, and it may be mm. a, a new beginning. Mm. I don't know. Mm. But the, the anger yeah. is, oh, is visceral. The, 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 yes. All of your wonderful viewers and, and listeners will be writing in in their droves to say, what we did last week, we looked at what's going to be the silver bullet for people to win the next election. Mm. And I think if people focus on those issues as opposed to the, the politics of personalities, that's going to happen. But undoubtedly, Boris, I, it's worth more than a fiver. He's going to be back. He wants to be back. Uh, and I think this is a political shenanigans just, just to make that happen. Yeah, definitely. Would you bet more than a fiver? And what would you bet? Well, I, I'm just thinking about Carrie now, actually. You know, Carrie being the, the person behind Boris, I think she is actually more powerful as a Lady Macbeth uh, character. A force majeure. A force majeure. <laughs> she definitely is. Yeah. Sitting in her £3.8 million house, uh, pound house in Oxford awful. now, <laughs> expecting her third child imminently. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, or her fourth child, because clearly Boris is her number one child. Ooh. I mean, I just don't know where this goes next. I mean, the Sunday Who's Express... Who's advising them now at number 10? Who are the spads? I, I don't know is the honest yeah, answer. To that. I don't know but you, either. But they're probably, as you rightly say, they're probably ten, and they have no experience, <laughs> and so therefore, if you haven't seen this before, you know the Conservative Party, and I said this yesterday. The one thing they're brilliant at is destroying themselves. Yeah, <laughs> and, and you're absolutely right. And I think the most damaging thing when Carrie, when she left Number Ten, Carrie doesn't live here anymore. When they played that song, <laughs> it was devastating because that I mean, that's was ruthless. That is ruthless. Isn't that? Thank yeah, you. Well, that's, that shows you. The public, the public opinion in yeah. terms of yeah. uh, temperature, what they think of her. Yeah. Yes. They might want Boris back, but they won't want her. No, and that's the problem. It's all about wallpaper and sort of interior resigns. You remember the headlines around yeah. that sort of time? Yeah. That's what you, you know what gets the general public up in arms. I mean, just, I mean, so there are so many different takes on this. Yes. I, and, and obviously, this will then run through. And yeah. as I've said, I think there are two MPs who could well go today or tomorrow. Inside sources. Inside sources. And obviously, I did actually take your legal advice <laughs> earlier whether I could actually <laughs> mention it. Um, and um, I mean, as long as I say they are sources and they're good sources. Yeah. Well, is, you were my source. I could disclose that. Yeah, so it's it's really that. good. But just in terms of where we go from here, I mean, they're going to do it with maximum impact. And yes. I know, so, So, for example, tomorrow, Julia's show, The Breakfast Show, will, she'll obviously be all over this. Yeah. Right. Because I'm imagining something will happen tonight. Of course it will. To make the, no, the no. papers and, tomorrow. And you time it beautifully mm. to get the news. You get your announcements and so on and so forth. And politicians know how you're going to get those <laughs> headlines. And yeah. those wonderful sound bites we spoke about do earlier. Do you know, I would rather they'd stopped chasing the headlines, to be honest with you, and got on with governing the country. So that is a I'm, great I'm point. So, I, I am so sick of all of this. But so many people have messaged to say, yeah, haven't they noticed that we're in a cost yes. of living crisis? Hello. There's no energy. Hello. That, yeah, exactly. I've got a voting card. Mm. How do you want me to use it? Mm. Show me. Mm. Show me. Show me the money. Mm, I agree. I'm sick of it. I, I agree with you. All right, let's move away from Boris Johnson, shall we, and move on to Trump. <laughs> you see, we're, aren't we lucky? <laughs> from, from <one> segue again. <laughs> we, we, we love the great segue because we, we have a, you know, we live in interesting <laughs> times. We live in extraordinary times. Where Don't say unprecedented times. I was going to say, it is an Don't unprecedented, unprecedented. No, it's an unprecedented yes, use of I the do. word yeah, unprecedented oh. use of the word unprecedented and it is so boring isn't it but trump is a master a master at getting the headlines and apparently team trump's got a new tactic to keep out the crazies i'm not sure how they're doing that uh, because led by uh, an extraordinary <laughs> chap um but it is the thing about american politics is that even if you are charged with all sorts of things even if you're in jail you can still run to be president which i find extraordinary yes, you can, yes. isn't that extraordinary but, yeah. but also this whole thing i don't really understand he was indicted and they found that he had top secret files hidden away in yeah. mar uh, mar-a-lago yeah. but also as president couldn't he declassify them well, anyway? he meant to. no he meant to. he forgot before he went in the shower how did that, he forget that, <laughs> oh by the way i forgot I, I, i've no, got some top secret files i happen to have exactly hanging right. around but the great thing is and this is what whatever you hear in the headlines his supporters will always support him and as long as you feed the narrative and which is exactly what he's doing is turning around and saying hang on it's a conspiracy theory they want to oust me they want to stop me yeah. so they're going to 
panic all these things all his supporters are going to do is say absolutely yeah, we're down. behind him they yeah, double down they'll double so down. he is the master double down. master at controlling the narrative and he is. all credit to him we need personality with with, with, with politics uh, i agree basis. actually we'll talk to caroline faraday she'll join us from los angeles uh, after nine and talk about that i'm sure she, it will be on her list of stories you know the, the orangeness that's coming across <laughs> new york at the moment that was a really yes. funny joke you about. think that's trump <laughs> 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 no. it's trump couldn't see we couldn't see trump, trump because he was uh, trump's trump's makeup <laughs> hidden, hidden in the orangeness it's, got, it's yeah. getting good yeah. very good yeah. okay let's move on uh, so so you um you've talked about harry and of course yes. uh, i think we've probably done that have we, we unless we, you've got we, anything done. well no i think the interesting thing is as say um the jury's out on that sort of the judge is out he'll, he'll look at the relevant facts and so on mm. and so forth it was a different era and i think you look at that sort of thing it's all about how you got the stories mm. and whether they were illegal um every single side turned round in court and i say it's not necessarily reported they all recognize that actually he is a member of public uh, he is of public interest and therefore he's going to be subjected to all sorts of things but that's not illegal the question is the methods that were used Indeed. to get the stories and, and they're looking at those and they're basically he's got 33 stories that they're looking at and each of those they're going through i was there when they do the cross-examination of the journalists concerned and so on and so mm, forth mm. Uh, and i think that the judge will go through it will be a long time before he reaches his Do you verdict. think so? They will be. What it, sort it, it of will time be frame? I reckon probably September. Right. I reckon let's go for September the 9th or thereabouts. Give or two. Mm, okay. 20%. <laughs> give or take. <laughs> very VAT. Oh, that's very good. <laughs> I'm just hazarding a guess. Um, but have a look. But it's, it's important that you go through those sort of things. They look at that sort of basis. Yeah. Um, it's not just the headlines. I always say question everything and how you get to the I bottom know. Of the I mean, also in Harry's, I mean, some of his stories allegedly don't kind of maybe stack up in the same way but also he did talk about an invasion of privacy but yeah. you know when you're born into the royal family it 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 kind of goes well, he's with sort the of and, and I still remember the young Harry, and I, I was yeah. again there, walking behind. There was a lot of love for Harry. No, there, there was. There was. And, and there the media really goes was. on. There was, absolutely. And and his his uncle, uh, Charles Spencer, who mm, I mm. interviewed a number of times, he was basically, the one thing he wanted to do was to persuade the palace not to let him, not to force him to walk behind his mother's coffin. Oh, no. Because seeing the sight I think of that was such horrific. a young lad and how that traumatised him. But you see, I, I don't understand how they did that, why they made the change children do that i yeah, just it's, it's horrendous and you still i still remember the, the the smell of the lilies when you're passing i was right on that corner and it's it was extraordinary it was a horrible sight a horrible sight to see and i think, I think the whole everyone nation... remembers where they were when yeah, Diana was yeah. there, when and, and I, th it. I think that's the thing and we do we have a love relationship a love hate relationship mm. with the royals and it works on that basis but they're still going to be members of interest you're yeah. talking around in the times they're talking about this is love islands of the equivalent of, of uh, henry the eighth <laughs> tying in again with your <laughs> fascinating fact I think, the, I think the public sense uh, uh, almost a sense of ownership yeah. of the monarchy because the public mm. is publicly funded a lot of it mm. so i think that's where the public interest yeah. comes in i agree you know and i think we we, we, we well, we're all we're, it's a complicated relationship because we pay yeah. for the monarchy yeah. as well don't yeah. we yeah. so and and i've said a lot about uk plc and i i'm a great believer in the monarchy because i think there is an area i mean look at the political chaos at least yeah. there's a veneer of stability well it's that difference between yeah. what's yeah. in the public interest and what's of interest to the public yeah. yeah and you look at that sort of thing. here everybody recognizes you're going to be there they want the stories um the press have moved on if you like from from those sort of days there are sort of uh, agreements in place about how they mm. report and when they report um but but it's, uh, it, it's good to shine a spotlight on that era so at least we know what happened let's move on to this miracle oh, in I the love Amazon. This story. it's a great story plane crash <laughs> children found alive after 40 days and now it's, it's, days. it is incredible isn't it a Miraculous. teenager mm. well what happened the teenager who was raised on survival games she basically saved her siblings and it just shows about the ingenuity so, so, and so, so on and so, so forth. Th these are indigenous people i believe is um, that right as i understand yeah. looking at the pictures yes i think that's right colombian soldiers rescued the children the eldest were, of whom was only 13 wow. uh, and obviously this was a plane crash mm. and the children managed to survive which i think is it's, we so, need so, to sort of so what, from what i understand is that they'd learned all these techniques about how you survive yeah. on on berries and, yes, and foraging sort of and yeah. all that stuff and that's what saved them. yeah absolutely and it was these survival games that they used to do Amazing. and so on and so forth and it's that's what you need. How you did need they find the things. fluid? Well, um, but that's the thing. They were very dehydrated. Of course. Um, but after 40 days, they would find something and rivers and other bits of business. And you can hack into trees and drink the sap and all those sort of things. But it, it, it just shows. Um, and if you look, there are these glorious pictures. I don't know how close up you can bring it. But there are these glorious pictures yeah. of the children being saved. And that's what we want. We want the good stories as well as the things. So tragedy, obviously, with the plane crash. But the children were found alive after 40 days, which I think was a, a, a wonderful story. Um, yeah. I mean, amazing. Um, let's just take a quick break. I want to keep you, if I may. 
Uh, we've got so many more papers yes. to go through. Yeah, There's been a lot going on <laughs> overnight. Uh, let's take a, a quick break. Andrew and Claire will be back after the break. This is Talk TV. Welcome back to Weekend Breakfast with me, David Bull. The time's 7.46 now on Sunday, June the 11th, and it's definitely hotting up in here in the studio with Glenn Muldoon <laughs> and Andrew Eborn, but also outside as well. Uh, lots of messages coming in. Uh, Dr Bull uh, says, Clayton in Dartford, the reason William and Harry were made to walk behind their mother's coffin was to shield Charles from the wrath of the crowd. That, uh, everyone knows that, says Clayton. Well, I didn't know that. but um, Anyway, uh, just moving on now. Gabby says uh, Sunak is a really treacherous man, and many of you saying the same thing. Interestingly, lots saying, in, I never voted for Sunak. Yeah. True. I voted, well, exactly. I voted for Boris Johnson. Extraordinary things here. Um, uh, Natasha says, thank goodness it's a beautifully sunny day, or I'd be so fed up. I loathe all these politicians from all sides. They're not interested in the people of this country and making their lives better just their own careers and power and that is very sad Claire very very sad very very sad you know we, we used to look to look up to MPs we used to look up to politicians they used to be people of good standing yeah they're an absolute joke they're an but absolute the, the, the sadness of cretins but the sadness for me is as someone who has been and is involved yeah. in yes, politics absolutely. is there are people who are trying to make a difference yeah. and then you get tarred with the same brush and that's the problem we always say trust arrives on foot and leaves on horseback and I think mm. the problem is the faith in politics at the moment is at an all time low you need people who do deliver who people can turn around and say actually they want to do it for good and I have to say the majority of politicians you, uh, yeah. are in it for good but let me tell you, I mean, it's not an easy ride being a politician. No. It really isn't. And, you know, you are, you are, <laughs> you get a lot of vitriol and bile. Mm. By the way, Claire, you'll like this. Uh, um, good morning, David. Please let Claire talk more, please. That feminine East Coast Scottish lilt is extremely sexy. Well, <laughs> and that's David in Leicestershire. But I think David, you've pulled. Dave, David <laughs> yeah. is not East Coast. I'm actually Glaswegian. Uh, so yeah, well, there there you are. Are. I didn't say it. He said it. Well, that was Mrs. David. Hey, David yes. in Leicestershire, yeah. you, yeah. you have been told off. I thought that was the mum, wasn't it? Mrs. <laughs> <laughs> from work. Okay. It's good. But you see, that everyone loves your accent. Lovely. Yes, yeah, isn't that nice? Lovely. Yeah, lovely. Uh, right, let's move on, Andrew, and talk about. I mean, there's. I actually kept some of these you for did. you because over the week, and you and I have talked a great deal about AI. There are so many yeah. stories coming out about AI. As I've said, I find it quite fascinating and frightening all at the same time. Yeah. You're, you're absolutely right. I know. I say back to the futurists. We always talk. There's an AI story mm. every single day, and I dance around more platforms than Paddington just to talk. <laughs> about these sort of interesting things. Uh, a couple of things in the papers today, they're talk talking about our lives may be changed by AI, but big tech just sees dollar signs. And what, what this particular piece by Neil Lawrence is saying is that they're talking about regulations and reining in AI to understand the possibilities, but also the threats. And they're saying that the reason for this is they want to shut out the competitors. Uh, that's Neil's view on that sort mm. of basis. But you see, looking at this one, the security minister warned that artificial intelligence is moving too fast, even for the, the finest clerks in parliament to regulate. So in fact, Regulation, and it's really interesting. I think I read somewhere later in the article they're saying that actually uh, regulation may not be quite the answer because by the time you've regulated, it's moved it's, on it's, so it, far. It makes no, no sense at all. I, I often use the example that a fork you can use that for eating spaghetti, but you can stab somebody in the back. Yeah. What you're not doing is stopping production of forks. What you need to look at is understand the technology, understand its capabilities, but also then working out between the relevant people it, how it should be. But regulated. isn't this about teaching ethics? <laughs> yes, in this. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. You've, got, you've got to work on that basis. It's also not only that, but it's the storage of the data that will be collated through mm. the AI. 100%. Where will that be stored? Mm. Who will have access to that? How long will it be stored for? You know, there's loads and loads But you see, I, loads and and I struggle with this the whole time. Whenever you go on a website and then yeah. they say, will you accept cookies? Most people no, say... No, reject I know, all. but most people say yes for an easy life yeah. because otherwise you have to go through I, I, 17 I, I, for, other... For a lot of people, they won't give you... The data is the new currency.
currency. It and is. that's what you're doing. You're it trading really stuff in data. <laughs> and people like uh, and Netflix and so on and so forth, uh, they're reducing stuff, and reducing prices on the basis that you give them permission or you let them advertise to you. Those ads will be tailored based on your data, effectively, from what you're watching and so on and so forth. So the more information you're sharing, that's what we have to be aware of. When I talk uh, yeah. around the world, as you know, on, on AI, you talk about what's it actually doing. At the moment, people were worried ages ago about identity cards. And I said at the time, it's rubbish because we've already got enough data on yeah. everybody. Every time you use your loyalty card, every well, time you use a credit card, phone. your mobile phone, I can pinpoint where you are, what you were doing at that moment. And what I bought. Absolutely. We know all that sort of stuff. Bare and skins. we can predict it in bare skins. <laughs> How did you know I just bought one? <laughs> <laughs> but all for the future. So I think that's what we need to understand, is understand the possibilities. Mm. So I, I always say it was the, uh, our greatest human achievement, but also the biggest existential threat. And that's what they're talking about. All these stories are looking at that every single day. I mean, it's really interesting also this ties in with Rishi Sunak, who, yep. who who was meeting obviously with Joe Biden, but obviously pushing for Britain to have this place mm. as a sort of, uh, I suppose, the AI regulator yep. of the world. Because we we are a, we are a leader. Interestingly, US data giant Palantir yep. has said Britain is a better place to develop AI uh, than the EU, yep. and that's because we're more pragmatic in terms of our privacy yes. laws, and that then plays into Rishi Sunak's hands actually. Yeah, and, and you're absolutely right. And people forget uh, companies such as DeepMind, which was created in 20. 10 was created right here See, in I the don't UK. think people know that. They don't. That's why you absolutely have to say, we punch way above our weight mm. on AI. It's what I advocated beforehand. Rishi Sunak is right to say, if we're going to regulate it, and then let's, why don't we become the hub? Why don't we look at all the expertise that we have and basically use that expertise to help the world uh, on, on that sort of basis? There so was we can an astonishing figure put on this, actually, it was at 3.2 billion, is it billion or million mm. pounds in terms of industry of AI in the UK? Yeah. Oh, I assume it's billions. Yeah, well, it's, 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 much, it's a lot it of money. It is a lot of money. Well, absolutely. And also, what's interesting, apart from the, the, the negative stuff about the 300 million jobs that are going to be lost, which PwC predict, Goldman Sachs say that basically it's going to contribute about 15 trillion dollars to the global economy so, so and, 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 and that's the interesting thing is as we again as we have a revolution it's another industrial revolution isn't it as we move to yes. more ai yes, yeah. yes, we yes. then can upskill people and yeah. that is the key yeah. to make sure people's salaries go up as well i mean also i'm just just interested there are a couple of other stories here the british military must punch above yes. its weight in terms of ai this is according to lord sedwill former head of the civil service basically saying ai needs to be up there in terms of our military might but also the worry about China yes. becoming the new mm -hmm. AI superpower. Beijing investing tens of billions yeah. of dollars it, every single it's year. It's frightening. What? It really is frightening. I started a master's a good few years ago, which I haven't, I unfortunately, got around to finishing. My dissertation, however, was going to be on AI. Yes, and was this it? was back in 2018, 2017. Right. And because of the rise of the robotic reporter. Mm. And when you think about it, everything could possibly have happened in the world has actually happened. Yeah. Wars, famines, yeah. natural disasters, everything, it's all happened. So that data, in terms of reporting, is all there. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. And it's actually been around, people forget, since the 1950s. So artificial intelligence has been around, discovered by Stanford and that sort of basis. Mm. Uh, and that's why Stephen Hawking was talking about it. Uh, Alan Turing, you know, the yeah, uh, of that sort of stuff, back of a £50 note. That that worked on that sort of premise, where he talked about the what they called the imitation game, is that if you can fool people into believing they're dis discussing with a real person, then that's the imitation game which has been lost. And that's already happened. We can basically work out, we can replicate people's voices, we can replicate what they look like and so on and so forth. Uh, and that's the thing to... Well, to, we should to replicate Bloom and Call Centres because I hate being stuck on those. Well, they are. They're getting better with call centres. And we talked about last time... Which planet are you on? <laughs> <laughs> it's going to get better. It's asked they, every single day. I, I am. <laughs> that, that's certainly true. Um, what's going to happen is they will alter... I can tell you, it's going to happen very quickly people always quote the example about call centres. What's going to happen if they're going to work out what you, what sort of voices you like to hear? So if you like to hear a certain... I don't Scottish, want to hear anyone's so, voice. No, I want to hear I want a to person. Get through. Yes. But, but you won't know the difference. That's why I say about the imitation oh, game. So yes, but you won't. If I am told one more time, your yeah. call is very important to us, yeah. and you, you're now in a queue of 9,000 other people because we're experiencing very high call volumes. Oh, really? What? What a there surprise. Every single day it's the same. Alan Turing, we always mention him, 
50 pound note, someone has a 50 pound note. Who, um, Alan who wanders Turing. around with a 50 pound note? I don't know, note. I just took it. Alan Turing, it's fantastic. He was the guy, imitation game, he broke the Enigma oh, code. Oh, Andrew, you're something else. Claire and, Claire and, I, I, Claire and I just looked at each other and were like, <laughs> yeah, it's who has a fit? There's a reason he's embarrassed. Is, I, I is, like, is the gin there already? Has he started on the gin? It's, it's, it's already started. Right. You had to work on that basis. Yes. Let's move on to what I think is an incredibly serious story. Yes. The front page of the Sunday it's Times, Times. Yeah. pretty much saying Wuhan scientists created the mutant virus before the pandemic. This basically is everything I've ever, ever said. said. I am completely vindicated. You do not have a virulent coronavirus yeah. like that, that that suddenly causes a mass yeah. pandemic from nowhere. You're absolutely right. And this is what, all credit to the Sunday Times for saying exactly this. There will be all sorts of denials and so on and so forth. So they're saying it wasn't just a leak. It could have been deliberately released. Mm. You're looking at that sort of stuff. We talked previously about AI and what they're using on that sort of basis. It can be used for bad as well, about of developing course. these chemical weapons and so on and so forth. So that's what happened. Scientists, that's what I was saying, scientists in Wuhan working alongside the Chinese military were combining the world's most deadly coronavirus to create a mutant virus just as the pa pandemic what began. It's what idiots. people have said and they're very worried about it's that power. sort of stuff. It's it power. is power. It's power, control, and corruption. But you see, the minute you, when you play with those very dangerous games, you don't know. I mean, it is Pandora's box, isn't yeah. it? Yes. You don't know what you're about yeah, to unleash. Exactly. And and I I hope you know uh, whether we get to the bottom of all of this. But those poor people who died yeah. of this, the vaccinations, the immunisations, the businesses that were destroyed, what we did to this country, what we did to other countries. Someone needs to be held accountable for this. Well, and, and this will be extra evidence that could be used to say actually who's going to pay for it? Mm. You're going to turn around on that sort of basis. There is a clear damage um, which which has happened not just to the world's economy, but to the health and so on and so yeah. forth. It Mental could, health, absolutely. Mm -hmm. So China uh, will obviously be on the defensive about this sort of. Stuff that we, we won't necessarily get to the truth mm. straight away, but we need to look at that. Mm, we do. I mean, uh, uh, what, what your feelings on it? I just... I, it has to be called out as well. We can't keep brushing it under the carpet no. and, you know, saying, well, it might have happened, it could have happened. It Well, clearly it shouldn't have happened, but there has to be a degree of accountability, mm. and we have to get that. I'm more interested in that than... Um, WhatsApp messages from Boris and, so you know, this whole so this whole select committee thing. That is the crux of the matter. So, China is. So, so I also think in terms of regulation, we talked about regulation of AI, yes. but actually we need to be very careful what we're doing in terms of uh, changing viral particles, what we're doing in terms of creating Mutation. these viruses yeah. that we will simply not be able to treat. Yeah. Antibiotic resistance, all that. The stuff that's going well, on well, in yeah, labs. You, you say we won't because the, the, the balance against that. I, mean, again, I know you talked about AI. AI, with the no, but it came up with uh, uh, the, the, the cure for a superbug. Yeah, it did. And what, one million people were dying every year. So we can use AI for good and bad. Why they're developing these sort of things in a lab Power. at all is, Power. is actually bad. But in terms of ranking, it's China, the US, then the UK who are the, the leaders in AI. We should be using the counteract to that and say, okay, well then, how do we deal with that? Why are people developing it? We have to stop that and i also against the automation of weapons and so on and so forth ai should not be used for those sort of things because it then we will absolutely lose control mm -hmm. and i think you need to look at that sort of side but it's scandalous and all credit to the times for yes, having it on the front great page great credit to them for that yep. a brilliant brilliant story andrew thank you very much a real pleasure always a pleasure to see you thank Good you very much you. this is talk tv